Well, Runway have done it again, really upping the game on the AI video to video front by introducing style references. Today, we're gonna dive in to see, well, A, how good it is and B, where its limitations are. But I've also uncovered a few tips and tricks for you and th the beginnings of a pretty interesting workflow. Okay, let's dive in. Kicking off, Runway have introduced restylized first frame for Gen 3 Alpha. Essentially, what this allows you to do is to take the first frame of any video that you upload and then, well, restylize it however you like. This works incredibly well, and, well, because it's Gen 3 Alpha, also incredibly fast. It does have its breaking points. Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a little bit. But I think what's most interesting to me here is the wild variety of use cases that we are all going to get out of this. So kicking off with testing, I, I had a clip sitting around on my hard drive of the ending of Time Enough at Last, uh, the old Twilight Zone episode. We have used this in the past on the channel. Uh, one of the best episodes. If you haven't seen it, definitely go check it out. So bringing that clip into Gen 3, uh, we do generally end up having to crop things. Uh, the aspect ratio is 1280 by 768. Uh, not a huge deal. You can resize if you need to. What you want to do is come down to this stylized first frame button hit that, um, and then you'll see we have the ability to upload a reference image. Um, a really nice little piece of quality of life that the Runway team has put together here is that you can just hit the download and that'll download the first frame. From here, you can take that image and we'll actually bring it to a number of different places. Uh, I ended up initially starting at least with Midjourney's retexture feature, although we'll be taking a look at Magnific's new style reference in a minute as well. Uh, on the Midjourney side, if you haven't used retexture, uh, you simply upload your image. From here, you can basically issue a prompt. You use all of your you know, profile, your styles, all of that, you know, various mid-journey stuff. Uh, hit submit retexture. And after some various re-rolling, you can actually see how many re-rolls over here. Uh, I ended up liking this guy. So um, downloading him, we load him up and we're pretty much set to generate. Uh, once again, Gen 3 Turbo is super fast. And the resulting output, well, I mean, it's not too shabby, right? I mean, it captures all of the camera movement, the performance, uh, the character himself does change, of course, but to note, we also asked it to do so. Now, I will note that on some outputs, our guy, you know, doesn't really capture uh, Meredith Burgess's performance there, uh, but that might have more to do with the input video, considering that, you know, we're looking at low res footage from a show from the 1950s. That said, uh, I do have a trick for that. We'll talk about that in just a second, but one thing you will definitely want to know about is uh, under settings here, we do have a slider for structure transformation. If you crank it up high, you will get a more stable video, though at the cost of the influence of your input video. Taking it down lower is of course the inverse. It will more closely resemble your initial video, though, perhaps at the cost of stability. To be honest, lower values do seem to work pretty well. So I would definitely aim for somewhere between one and four. I, I believe it defaults at four. Sliding over to another test that I, actually I've been dying to test out. Uh, I took a shot from George Malay's trip to the moon. I promise we'll get out of like old black and white footage in just a minute. But again, I really wanted to test this one out. This of course is a film from 1902. I believe it's considered to be the first science fiction movie ever. And I mean, just look at it. I mean, it's still cool. So once again, utilizing Midjourney's retexture, uh, playing around with some prompts in the steampunk style. I ended up with this image, which I, I ended up liking a lot. I, there was something about the tilt shiftness of the uh, the foreground characters that I thought was kind of cool. And our output ends up looking like this, which I, to me is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it does have some problems. Like it feels like it's a bit on the stop motion side, but I think that has more to do with our you know input video than anything. And there is some decoherence, like I don't know what is happening over here with this table. But I mean, at the same time, like there's a lot going on here. And listen, I know that not everyone is into like surreal, weird AI video outputs, but I am solidly in the keep it weird camp. And look, that is not to say that we can't get some extremely solid video restylizations out of Gen 3. Uh, for example, I really did want to shoot something for this, but I, I kind of ended up running out of time. So we're going to lean on uh, some of the original footage that I shot for the micro short film that I did to Tuesday, in which I use my phone and the Skyglass app to make a little like mini noir short. Just to make this extra weird and crazy, I actually ended up utilizing the footage of the character Tuesday that I then ran through Sora. 
I wanted to try out Magnific's new style transfer. So I uploaded our first frame in and then gave it the reference image of uh, this like, you know, illustrated style character turnaround that I generated in mid journey. The results uh, were, I mean, they're pretty cool. Um, it definitely comes off, you know, very illustrated as it should. And I will say that we did end up with like kind of a spare head over here, mostly because, you know, again, we had that character turnaround, so it took influence from that. Not a huge deal as I was just able to highlight that area and then using Photoshop's gen fill, uh, just remove head. I mean, given all the weird stuff we've all probably prompted, I definitely think that we're all on a watch list of some kind. A resulting output from gen three is pretty impressive. Obviously it is stylistically staying consistent with our uh, initial image Image, but more so, I mean, just to me, at least from an aesthetic standpoint, uh, this is like an animated style that would definitely catch my eye. Now, going back to that issue that we had in our first example from the Twilight Zone, uh, I ended up reversing the angle for our Malloy shot here and using this mid-journey generated image, um, you know, and running that through, we end up with this as an output. Active, no. Snoop, maybe got a pretty good nose. So what's the case? Now, stylistically, I think it looks pretty cool, but you know, obviously we are having some issues not only with lip sync, but with kind of like snappy head movement as well. The solution to that is in act one, which is in my opinion, runways ultimate superpower. Very briefly, in case you weren't aware, Act 1 essentially allows you to use driving video or even your webcam to, uh, you know, paste performances onto pre-existing video. So taking our choppy Malloy output here and then using my original source footage here, running the two of them together. Mr. Malloy, I see you're a detective and I'm a need at one. Detective, no. Snoop, maybe. Got a pretty good nose, so what's the case? It's still really wild to think about how many different iterations I've done of that footage over the last six months. Anyhow, moving on to something a little more on the experimental side, but first... So as we all know, OpenAI really dominates the news cycle with its constant ChatGPT updates. But if you've been feeling a bit stuck in a rut with ChatGPT, you should really give Anthropic's Claude a shot. And for a massive jumpstart in using Claude's core features to revolutionize your workflow, well, our friends at HubSpot have you covered with The Complete Guide to Claude AI, an exclusive ebook that you can download completely for free down below. In The Complete Guide, you'll learn how to utilize Claude's projects, artifacts, and interactive dashboard features to make AI work for you. And you'll learn how to set up Claude to be your AI virtual assistant. It is not a simple task management system, but more like a virtual collaborator. There's even a whole section on creating a content optimization system with Claude which combines content creation and content management into one ecosystem. Now it isn't just one document, it's also a blog post, a LinkedIn article, two newsletters, and a video script, all automatically. But my favorite part is that the ebook also contains links to a video lesson from HubSpot SVP, Kieran Flanagan. This is a great tutorial filled with useful information from someone that is, you know, actively using Claude in their day-to-day -day business life. If you've been sleeping on Claude, this is a great dive into the pool to see what it's capable of. Don't miss out, it is linked down below. And once again, my thanks to HubSpot for sponsoring today's video. So you might be wondering what happens if I don't use the first frame as a reference frame. Uh, well, I was wondering the same. So I took this VO2 footage uh, prompt very heavily referencing the original Alan Wake game. And then for our restylized first frame, I just ended up taking a screenshot of Keanu Reeves in the remake of The Day the Earth Stood Still. Does anybody remember that movie? Well, one thing's for certain, you're not gonna forget this output. Oh no, it does not work. Although, I, I mean, I look at how weird this is. There's certainly something here though that you could potentially mine you know, for a surreal sequence or some kind of effect, I'm sure. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy this in your dreams. The other experiment that I wanted to try out was utilizing Say Motion. Uh, this is the thing where you have like, you know, a 3D character and you can give it a text prompt for motion and see how that would work out. I mean, I've got to presume that I covered this at one point or another on the channel, considering that, you know, I've got a guy in a blue business suit doing karate kicks over here. <laughs> So prompting in with a person crouching, then stands up and then walks away, we end up with this, which we can kind of play around with. If you're not great with 3D or anything, I'm not great with 3D. Um, you can also download this as an MP4, uh, which I ended up doing. Now, a quick trick, because I was, I was pretty sure that 
an image restylizer probably wouldn't do so well picking up on that crouching figure. So I just ended up reversing that clip, um, knowing that at least that first frame gives an image restylizer a pretty good shot. So heading back over to Magnific and using that character reference from before, uh, we ended up with this as an output, which, um, you know, wasn't exactly what I was looking for, I will admit, but, you know, still kind of has a cool look to it. So taking that footage and, of course, reversing it, we end up with this, which, uh, you know, I mean, is it perfect? No, it definitely is not. But there is definitely something very promising about this. I'll definitely be workshopping that method a little bit more. But one thing I definitely wanted to highlight so this was some stock footage that I nabbed back in March of 2023 when Gen 1 first appeared. In fact, this is one of my first Gen 1 generations ever. I mean, that is what Gen 1 looked like at the time. Uh, it ran about, I think, three and a half seconds and was limited to eight frames a second. And this is that same shot today. And that is pretty spectacular. Now, is it completely perfect? No, it's not. But this is actually a super difficult shot as well, considering you have two characters that are rotating around. But if anything, I mean, that should just give you an idea of exactly how far we've come in, you know, just a little under two years. So that's it for today. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.